so I had done an ask me anything thread and I got two questions this week. So the first one is how did you decide to go off grid? And was it something you thought about for a while? We, we are kind of like fly by the seat of our pants people. Um, <laughs> last year, well, two years ago, we bought a camper and we were living in Texas at the time. My husband had just got out of the military. And so we thought a camper is a good option to live in until we figure out where in the States we want to live. Like we want to settle, uh, or we want to settle for right now. So we bought a camper and we were staying at RV parks, you know, like a couple months here, a couple months there in Texas. Um, some of them were super cool. Like one was right on the river. Um, some of them had pools and you could stay there for years if you wanted to. But we just have such like a wanderlust, both of us spirit. Um, you know, so we'd stay a couple months and then move on. Well, in Arkansas, my grandparents had an RV pad next to their cabin that they put in in case any family members like from California with their RVs wanted to travel out here they could just park the RVs on the RV pad and have full hookups you know and visit without staying in the little cabin so my aunt had said well you know if you wanted to stay there for a while you could so we said okay well if Tim gets a job up in Arkansas you know like in the area we would we weren't going to move up here until he had a job because he had a good job down in Texas. Well, a decent job down in Texas that he liked. Um, we just weren't near family. And so we thought, okay, if he gets a job here, we could be in the camper, you know, while we look for either places to rent or places to buy uh, and still be near family and figure out if we like Arkansas, if we hate Arkansas, you know, if we want to go back to Texas or if we want to move on. So... Tim got offered a job at the local prison, um, and we moved the camper up. And so, then we were in the camper, and we were, you know, we knew we didn't want to stay in the camper forever, obviously. But we didn't know, okay, we like Arkansas, you know, it's fine, but do we want to stay here? Do we want to go? Like, I would move to Alaska in a heartbeat. Um, there's just something about Alaska that calls to me. So... We didn't really want to be tied down yet, but the longer we were in the camper and the longer we weren't tied down, we just kept thinking, we just, I mean, I want something permanent or permanent for the next couple years. Um, yeah, I don't really like having a house that has wheels and I wanted to be able to plant a garden and you know, just to do more other than just have a couple potted plants and my dogs. And when we lived in Maryland with the army, we were on five acres and we had goats and chickens, you know, so we were into all the homesteading stuff before. And then when we he got transferred to Texas, we had to sell all of our livestock, sell everything. Um, and so then once we got out of the military, you know, got the camper, so, we knew we wanted to raise goats and chickens. The, like, we just fell in love with goats in Maryland, and they're kind of our non-negotiables. Like, wherever we are, we need to be on a property that can handle goats and chickens. Um, and so my grandparents, they're on 70 acres here. And my aunt and uncle and my grandparents' cabin are all over on the other like the other 10 acres on one edge of the property. And so the middle acreage um, was all trees and the loggers cleared it. So it's just nothing now. And then there was this last 10 acres. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. The last 10 acres where we put the tiny house. Um, the loggers had come by a few years, you know, maybe 10 years back and clear cut it. So it's pretty open and it wasn't accessible from the road, but we could, you know, we thought we could put it in a driveway. And so we started talking to my grandparents about, well, maybe we could buy, you know, the 10 acres. And we thought, our original plan was we'd buy the 10 acres, we'd put the road in, we'd move the camper over, you know, and then eventually we'd save up enough money to put a house out here. But I really didn't want to live in the camper anymore. Um, so we got thinking about alternative housing. We, okay... A big part of our lives is we do not do debt. 
we do not do credit, we do not borrow money, period, whatsoever. Um, so if we don't have the money, we don't do it. Um, which is why Hawaii is kind of hard to budget for, because I have no idea um, if I budgeted over or under or what. So it wasn't like we could just go to the mobile home store and, you know, get a mortgage and put a mobile home out here. Like, that wasn't an option. Um, we went and looked at some mobile homes, and they're so nice. I mean, compared to what Tim grew up in a mobile home, and he swore he would never be in one again. And then when he saw the new ones, he was like, well, I could do this. You know, but then it doesn't have as much resale value as a stick and brick house. So, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're always thinking about what we're going to do in the future here. But getting a mortgage was not an option. I didn't, the camper was an option, but there's no power, there's no septic, there's no water, there's no nothing out here. So you would still have to have like an outhouse because you can't use the camper bathroom if you're not hooked up or if you're not planning on taking it to a dump station. The air conditioning in the camper wouldn't work because there's nowhere to plug it into out here and there's no water source. So the water in the camper wouldn't work. So basically the camper would be like a hot box out here um, which is not a very good idea either. So, long story, semi-short, um, we started looking at tiny houses. And a lot of the shed places around here, like, they're on the side of the freeway, um, they have sheds, and now they start to have tiny houses. Or at least, like, they're sheds that look like houses. Um, so they have, instead of having shed doors, they have, like, a three-wheel front door. A lot of them have a porch, um, they have more windows. It's just more set up for tiny house living rather than sheds, like your shed that would house your mo your lawnmower. Um, so, and we had some money saved up. So we thought, okay, well, we could afford this. So we went to the shed store. And the sheds we were looking at, like the tiny house sheds, ran about 12 grand. And we thought, okay, you know, we could make that work. 12 grand, you know, if we say we're going to live in it for the next four years, is not that bad. Um, and so then it's a, it was a matter of finding which one we really wanted and 12 grand is a big commitment. So we wanted to be sure we really wanted that, you know, whatever particular one. Well, we went to one shed place and we told the guy our budget and he said, well, you know, I have, I have sheds, I have tiny houses in that budget. Nothing, nothing within our budget was finished. So everything came you know, just the stud walls. Um, but then he said, but I also have this one back here. It was a repoed shed. And so it was half price because he just needed it gone. Um, and so it wasn't exactly what we wanted, but we decided we could make it what we wanted. So we ended up buying the repoed shed. Um, we did a lot of modifications to it. We're still in the process of insulating it and we're getting electricity, like I said. So we're in the process of putting in outlets and boxes and it'll have electricity. Um, but, okay, so how did we decide to go off grid? When we were, I guess it all came down to money. We did not want to be off grid for the rest of our lives. I mean, if it works, that's fine, we would do it. But because we don't borrow money, and because we don't have like an unlimited bank account, we needed to do something that was possible right now. So right now, we can afford a tiny house, we can afford to bring electricity out, um, we can't afford to drill a well, so that's gonna wait. Um, so right now we put up gutters, we have rainwater harvesting, um, I have a big Berkey filter that filters out all of our drinking water, but our drinking water we get from town. Like, Hot Springs has free water towers that you can get water at. Um, so we don't drink the rain water, but it it waters all the animals in the garden and everything outside. So, it, I guess we started looking at off-grid by necessity, because we couldn't afford to do everything right away. So it was either stay in the camper and not do anything housewise until we had money to do everything, or just do it a step at a time. So that's why we put the tiny house out here. We've been fixing it up. Um, you know, if we got the tiny house in May, so now it's September and we're just now getting electricity. 
Um, so maybe next year we'll have enough money to dig a well. Um, or maybe we'll figure out, you know, we don't need one. Um, you know, we might do just fine with the rainwater harvesting. It's hard to know how it's going to be over the course of a year. There's been a couple times this month that it's gone dry. I mean, this since we've had it, that it's gone dry. And we have to get water from the creek or from the lake or from town. Um, so that's fine. It's all free. Um, we can take our five-gallon jugs into town and fill them up for free. So while it's a pain, it's doable. Um, and it beats paying 10, 20 grand, you know, right now to get a well. Um, which isn't an option because we don't have it. And we don't do credit. So that's how we decided to do off-grid. Um, we've always had that homesteading spirit and we thought eh, what the heck we can do it um but we can't not in Arkansas I mean we can't do the heat in Arkansas so okay that was that question sorry it took me so long um you guys are here for yarn not for homesteading okay last one it's another homesteading question what is your favorite part about your homesteading life what is my favorite part oh I don't know um I love the goats I love the goats but I also love the chickens, and I love, I love the feeling of being able to do something for myself. So, homesteading is all about that kind of do-it-yourself mentality. Um, not that we don't rely on other people, but it's more, like, it's a constant, what can I do next, you know, on my own, for myself. So, we started with chickens, you know, and then, okay, well... What else could we do? Okay, well, we can do goats. And then goats will produce milk. And the chickens can drink the milk. And so, you know, and pigs. Pigs can drink. Like, you can raise pigs on primarily milk. Um, so, you know, now we're thinking maybe this winter we'll get pigs. So it's just a constant evolution of this animal supplies this, which could feed that animal. So maybe we should get that animal. And then, you know, like raising your own, like having a garden. Um, which we failed miserably at this year, probably because we didn't have a water, watering system in place. Um, and it's been such a weird summer. But anyways, so we have a garden, we have animals, um, we have bees, we can, Tim hunts. So, I don't know, it's all kind of a bundle in itself. The thing I like most probably is the animals. Um, it's so fun to just go out there and sit with them. And they're hilarious. Um, Tim's putting together a little goat video for you guys so you can meet the goats and the sheep. Um, and we'll probably post it next week instead of a podcast while we're in Hawaii. But they're just... And goat kids. Oh my goodness, guys. They're so rambunctious and so jumpy and just so happy about life. And it's really catching. The chickens can be a little bit more snobby. Um, yeah, but they're all fun. Um, it's pretty nice to be able, like, we can make our own bread in our oven, we can, you know, go get an egg from the chicken, fry it up, and have it completely homemade from the farm meal. Um, and I just love that feeling. I love not being able, well, not having to depend on a supermarket. Um, yeah. You know, like, if the power goes out right now, although it's hot, we'd be okay because we have the solar panels. Like, we wouldn't really notice, other than it being really hot, we wouldn't really notice. Our stove and our um, oven, our propane run, so those don't use electricity. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I think my favorite part is the animals. And they're super addicting. And they say chickens are the gateway animals, because once you get a chicken, you're going to get another breed. Um, the little cat figured out how to do the ladder. And so she just climbed down it.